Hello members, I'm legal counsel with CSLEA, Stacey Olson. Before coming to CSLEA, I spent over 10 years in private practice doing estate planning and estate-related litigation. I would like to take this opportunity to give you a brief explanation of the importance of getting your estate plan in place, as well as tell you about the four basic documents which create a complete estate plan. This may come as a surprise, but there isn't anyone in the state of California that does not have an estate plan. If you choose not to prepare a will or a trust, the state of California still has an estate plan for you. It's called intestacy. It's slow, expensive, and not customized to your wishes. Intestacy is a basic set of rules by which the state will dispose of your assets if you pass away without an estate plan of your own creation. Unfortunately for most people, the state's plan is less than ideal because it can often be slow, it is public, and it is costly to your loved ones as probate fees are set by statutes and start at approximately $8,000 for a small estate. And because it's one size fits all, many times under intestacy, your estate will pass to people you would not otherwise provided for. So, in order to avoid intestacy, most adults should have a basic estate plan. A basic estate plan normally includes four documents, a trust, a pour over will, a healthcare directive, and a power of attorney for finance. The trust. A trust is designed to hold your assets while you are alive and then safely and efficiently transfer your assets to your beneficiaries upon your death. I tell people to picture their trust like a basket. While you are alive, you can put anything into your basket, including your home and bank accounts. You continue to hold the basket, choosing to add or remove assets at any point, staying in complete control as trustee of your own trust. Then, when you pass away, you simply hand the basket to someone you trust and they continue to hold and distribute your assets according to your wishes. If you have young children and want to make sure you leave money for their education, you can include a provision that your trustee can use trust assets to pay for school. If you are worried a windfall of money when your child turns 18 might cause problems, you can include a provision delaying the age at which your children will inherit. And because your trustee is someone you trust, they have the job of honoring your wishes and distributing your estate to the loved ones of your choice. The pour over will. The second document needed for a complete estate plan is a pour over will. Many people ask, if I do a trust, why would I need a will too? A pour over will is different than a regular will, which leaves grandma's ring to Susie and disinherits cousin Bobby. The sole beneficiary of a pour over will is the trust you created. The objective of a pour over will is to collect any assets that you may have left out of your trust and pour them back into the trust. For example, you will likely put your house in your trust when it is created. But then, say you inherit a second home from your parents or open a new bank account in the following years and you simply forget to put these assets into the trust. At your death, the pour over will can act as a backup and catch these assets pouring them back into the trust by collecting any assets not already in your trust and transferring them back to your trustee. Power of Attorney for Finance. Another important document for a cohesive estate plan is a power of attorney for finance. While you are alive, if you become incapacitated, your power of attorney can act on your behalf in financial transactions. Unfortunately, as we age, we are more likely to suffer from declining health, including dementia, and sometimes even being placed on life support. A power of attorney for finance will allow the person of your choice to handle all your transactions, including making your mortgage payment and talking with your retirement provider, or applying for and collecting benefits on your behalf. Because your mortgage and retirement are often not in your trust, your trustee would not be able to access this information. However, your POA for finance would. Healthcare Directive The last document in a cohesive estate plan is the Healthcare Directive. This document designates who you want to make your healthcare decisions when you are no longer able to make them for yourself. Likewise, in this document, you can make your end of life wishes known, including organ donation, burial arrangements, and removal of life support. This is especially important because it's often a difficult time for families when they are tasked with making difficult decisions like removing life support. And making your wishes clear gives them peace of mind that they are doing what you wanted. A competent estate planning attorney. The last and probably the most important component of an effective estate plan is finding a competent estate planning attorney. There are many document preparation and do-it-yourself websites for estate planning these days, 
but these complex documents really should be tailored to your unique situation. As such, I highly recommend that you use an estate planning attorney with at least several years of experience to prepare your plan. I have personally witnessed countless times when someone's desire to save a few hundred dollars by doing their own estate plan has cost thousands of dollars in legal bills when the plan fails. If you need a referral to a competent estate planning attorney, please contact CSLEA or the State Bar of California. Thinking about and preparing for death is never easy, but it is always necessary. And a few simple steps to get your final affairs in order can save you and your loved ones hours of heartache and headaches in the future.